Hi guys, the topic for today is the optic nerve decompression. Well, the contents are the introduction, the relevant anatomy of the orbit and the optic nerve, the indications, the clinical feature signs and symptoms, the investigations, approach to the surgery and the complications with references. Introduction. The optic nerve is a fiber tract of the brain white matter with afferent fibers coursing posteriorly from the retina through the bony canal, optic canal, located at the posterior superior aspect of the bony orbit. Uh, posterior to that, the optic nerve, ophthalmic artery, post-ganglionic sympathetic fibers and the meningeal extensions are contained within the optic canal. Optic nerve consists of approximately 1.2 million axons that arise from the retinal ganglion cells. So if we talk about the course, it has a four parts, the intraocular portion, the intraorbital portion, the intracanalicular portion and the intracranial portion. Well, in the intraocular portion, it's one millimeter, the intraorbital, it's 225 to 30 millimeter in length. The intracanalicular portion, it's five to nine millimeter and the intracranial is 10 to 16 millimeter in length. So the medial wall, the medial wall consists of the frontal process of the maxilla, the lacrimal bone, the lamina preparation of the ethmoid, the body of the sphenoid. Whereas the inferior wall, it consists of the orbital plate of the maxilla. Anterior laterally, there is a zygomatic orbital plate, the orbital process of the palatine bone. On the lateral wall, there is a greater wing of sphenoid, the orbital surface of the zygoma, the zygomatic process of the frontal bone, then the superior orbital fissure. Whereas the superior wall, there is the orbital plate of the frontal and the lateral wing of sphenoid and superior orbital foramen. So what are the indications in which we need to do the op uh, optic nerve decompression? Well, the most common cause is a trauma, road traffic accident. Then comes the other causes like the thyroid eye disease, the neoplastic compression example in the meningioma. In fibrosis due to the chronic inflammations like in the Wagner's granulomatosis, the radiation neuritis, benign and the malignant tumors of the skull base, the skull base fractures including uh, the sphenoid sinus, other uh, conditions like the retroorbital hemorrhage and the optic neuritis. So the clinical features, signs and symptoms which you will get in this condition, they can be the diminished visual acuity, the defect in the color vision, there can be abnormality in the pupillary reflex, visual field defect, loss of the contrast sensitivity, the diminished stereo acuity, the contrast sensitivity, headache and papilledema. So what are the investigations which we need to do? We can need to do the axial and the coronal CD scans, nose PNS, the MRI, the fundus or photography, the routine investigations. Well, in the surgery, the, or, the orbital apex may be approached externally from above, laterally, midly, or in combination. The extracranial, transcranial endoscopic approach employed for the medial decompression, the craniofacial approach for the extensive unilateral, the bilateral decompression of the nerve. Well, in the pre-operative uh, assessment, uh, before proceeding to the surgery, the pre-operative evaluation and important investigations should be carried out. And the timing of the surgery, the medications, high dose steroids and IV mentol should be given. Now, if we talk about the endoscopic optic nerve decompression, the steps. See, here is this is the middle turbinate. This is the uncinate process. You can see this is the bulla. This is the uncinate process. So, we are here, we are doing the Ansenectomy, then the anterior ethmoidectomy, the ethmoid bulla forms the posterior border of the higher seminaries. So with use of the micro divider or a punch force, the ethmoid bulla should be interred along its inferior and middle aspect. Always remember this, we need to enter along the inferior and middle aspect. So once this opening is formed, the anterior and the middle wall can easily be taken down to expose the posterior wall. Some surgeons leave the inferior wall intact as a strut to keep the turbinates medial. So opening the agar nasi and the superbular cells completes the anterior ethmoidectomy.
Then we need to do the posterior ethmoidectomy to open the posterior ethmoids. The inferior and medial aspect of the vertical basal lamina must be removed with a micro debrider. If a, uh, if a, a spheroethmoid set is present, the posterior ethmoids will extend laterally and superior to the sphenoid sinus. So the optic nerve may be dehiscent within the lateral aspect. Then comes the sphenoid sinusotomy. The once the ostium of the sphenoid sinus is identified, it should be widened, inserting a small straight forcep or the cup forcep or a mushroom forcep, opening it and out fracturing the anterior sphenoid wall as the forcep is pulled out. So after completion of the ethmoidectomy and the wide sphenoidotomy, that allows the visualization of the optic canal. Here we can see this is the carotid. This is the optic canal and optic nerve we can see so the canal sits immediately superior and anterior to the carotid imprint so this is the carotid it lies anti superior and anterior to the carotid imprint on the lateral wall of the sinoid sinus the anterior wall of the sinoid sinus is removed laterally until the optic tubercle is reached so uh, the anterior wall of the sphenoid sinus is removed laterally until the optic tubercle is reached. This is the thick buttress of the bones formed at the junction of the posterior lamina papyracea and the anterior and the lateral sphenoid ball. And it marks the location of the optic nerve foramen and the annulus of the gin. The posterior one centimeter of the lamina papyracea is removed. Remember the posterior one centimeter of the lamina papyracea is removed at the level of the optic canal. The orbital periosteum and the optic tubercle is thin with a straight diamond bow. The thin fragments of the bone are elevated using a thin curate or an elevator and are then removed using an angle by uh, biting sinus forceps. It should be remembered that the ophthalmic artery may lie in the inferior middle quadrant of the optic nerve sheath in approximately 15% of the cases and therefore the incision should be resisted to the superior middle quadrant. So what can be the complication, the post-operative visual loss, the diplopia, the cerebrospinal fluid leak and sepsis are the complications. Thank you.